Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. I'm sure you've been waiting for this one. So this is my IGCSE 0580 Maths predictions for the October exams 2025. So the paper two on the 7th and the paper four on the 15th of October. So I'm going to go through what topics really do appear, what changes have happened also, and then give you a complete breakdown of the frequency of topics so you know exactly what to revise. So our first topic here is probability slightly up here at 106%. Notice we've now got non-calculator and calculator, but they've been putting probability questions into non-calculator as well. This is a very typical question, and watch out for that phrase, without replacement. That's going to change that probability so keep an eye out for that kind of question. It's often quite a lot of marks, either on paper two or on paper four. Sequences is slightly down here at 65%. It's generally been a pretty common topic, but on paper two, as we found out here, it's slightly down. So it's now in the often category. Again, they can give you a variety of different questions. This is very typical part B, where you're looking for the expression for an nth term or writing out a sequence. Statistics up at 129%. I mentioned this in one of my other videos that they are putting sort of typical calculator topics actually into paper two as well. So you still need to revise this and it's still up 129%. So notice we've got the mode range and median, so from a stem and leaf diagram, but there could be a cumulative frequency diagram that you have to read from. Coordinate geometry up at 94%, so almost certain, not quite 100%. Uh, and this is a very typical question here, where you find the coordinates where two things cross. So that involves some quadratic simultaneous equations sometimes as well, depending on the question. But you can also get questions where you're looking for a perpendicular bisector. That's always been a very classic paper two question. Percentage calculations at 71%. Again, that's going to be much more now towards paper four. Now, it's the only calculator paper. This is very typical to, um, finding the phrase compound interest. And here we're actually looking for the interest rate. So they can ask you a lot of different kind of questions, finding the original amount, finding the final amount, finding the interest rate. So you really have to read them carefully. Speed distance time down here at 59%. So again, probably going to be appearing more on paper four these days. Again, this is a very typical question. Remember these words, deceleration and acceleration, particularly for a speed time graph. So revise both distance time and speed time. Indices, no change at 65%. These are usually two mark questions, but here in Cole, some working out here. If we take this question, remember the index applies to both of these separately. So I'll quickly do this for you here. So making sure you're doing the 81 to the power of three quarters as well as the letter as well. Fraction skills, no change at 171%. Again, this phrase is no longer used because it's now on paper two, and it's pretty much exclusively a paper two question. This also uh, includes recurring decimals to fractions. I put this into this section as fraction skills. So again, you can get a question like you see in front of you and a recurring decimal question. That's why it brings it up towards 200%. So here's the list of topics. I have ordered this for you. So starting with the certain. So calculated skills, of course, is now removed. So you don't have to worry about this. But of course, fraction skills, statistics, probability are the most important topics, followed by coordinate geometry, sets, Venn diagrams. And vectors, surprisingly, now is coming into it. So making sure you revise these and then look at those often topics. So systematizing your revision is going to be very useful for you. Now, these exam predictions will only get you so far. You really need to understand the concepts behind the IGCC maths that we're doing. And that's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, really steps in. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons based on maths, computer science, data analysis, and even AI. And what I really like personally about Brilliant, it's its hands-on problem-solving approach. It's all about learning by doing, and it's proven to be six times more effective than just passively watching lectures. It builds your understanding from the ground up. It's also super, super engaging, and there's daily competitions to really keep you motivated, and it really helps you get an intuitive understanding of things like solving equations. So when there's a tricky problem that comes up on the exam, you're more than ready for it. So to start your journey, become an effective problem solver. Again, go to brilliant.org forward slash ginger map petition, and you get 20% off the Brilliant Premium subscription. Again, that's brilliant.org forward slash ginger map petition, and it's really going to improve your effective problem solving skills. So click on that QR code, get started with a premium subscription and get unlimited daily access. 
Okay, on to paper four. So no surprise here, a volume surface area of 3D shapes. You're pretty much guaranteed to get one big question that involves this. Notice here we're having to work out different volumes of a hemisphere, of cylinder. So working with that. Notice on the paper two, they do it in terms of pi. Paper four, again, you're rounding to two decimal places. And do watch out for rounding errors because that can lose you marks throughout the sub-questions. Quadratics, no change here at 59%, so it's still reasonably often, but they like to do it in the context of another question. This is a good example here, where we have a speed distance time question, but actually a quadratic comes out of it, and they can do this in lots of different contexts. So sometimes it might be a geometric question where they work with some areas in terms of X. So you have to watch how they sneak in these quadratics pretty sneakily. Differentiation here, 82%. It's pretty certain to appear in some way on paper two or paper four, generally steered towards paper four. So this is a typical question where they ask you to differentiate and then use it in some way here, where the gradient is 17 and work backwards. Sketching graphs. Now, particularly in the 2025 exams, this has started coming back, specifically drawing tangents. This used to be kind of an old style question, but it's coming back now in 2025. So make sure you revise this. This is one example, and actually they could do it with any function. Here they've done it with cosine, but they could do it with an exponential function or x cubed or something like that. Make sure you revise this, because I think some teachers have moved away from this because it hasn't appeared in recent past papers, but it's making a comeback. Probability, again, pretty much certain to appear in both paper two, paper four. Again, they can put it in both. This is a good example of a tree diagram question. Make sure you know these really, really well. Statistics, again, it's always been a huge calculator topic. That's no surprise we're up here at 165%. This is a nice question where they test your knowledge of pie charts. Generally, they won't extend it, get you to draw a pie chart, but they'll often get you to work out the sector angle like they do in this question. Okay, and percentage calculations, again, a whopping 165%. It's usually one big question with lots of subparts. If you check out my predicted paper on my website, you'll see there is a percentage calculation question included, which is very typical and can vary quite a lot. It's really about reading the question, reading exactly what they want you to do and applying that knowledge. So here's the list. As you can see, there's lots of certain topics. We've got statistics, uh, percentage calculations, area of 2D shapes and volume of 3D probability, functions, which you haven't talked about, but they do like these big function questions, but occasionally it doesn't appear. And of course, sine and cosine rule. So they give you some triangles or a um, quadrilateral of some kind, and you have to use the sine rule and cosine rule to actually work out the angle. So if you're thinking about your revision at the moment, and this is the weekend before your exam, I am launching the A-Star Accelerator program. So essentially what this is, it's a weekend, four hours on Saturday, four hours on Sunday, the weekend before your paper two exam. And I'm gonna go through everything I can to get you up to that A-Star. So you can see the program here. Again, I'll put the link in the description for you. There are still places available. Uh, when I filmed this, I think there's 22 spots available, still available. All you have to do is click on this button here and that will take you through to get you signed up. And then you can join me on the Saturday and Sunday before your exam, four hours on Saturday, four hours on Sunday of intensive preparation. Again, you can see the bootcamp agenda here on day one and day two. Any questions, of course, you can email me at gingermathematician.com. And if you're looking for some final revision on IGCSE Maths Paper 2 for the 2025 edition, then do check out the video right in front of you.